Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sito and you're watching Sito and D. Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to explore the secrets of developing a successful product using the SMART brief so the smart brief stands for s-m-a-r-t i will go through what these mean we'll also talk a bit about the fascinating world of fashion collection creation and what are the things that you need to do in terms of creating the fashion collection and also why is it so important to understand the crucial role of a design brief in the process of it lastly i will walk you through the complete production process in the clothing business so let's get started first things first let's understand the smart project brief so smart but basically a lot of people in business use this term it's s-m-a-r-t s stands for specific m stands for measurable achievable a stands for achievable r stands for relevant and t time bomb when you're creating a product you need to keep these things in mind because it's a structured approach that is used very often in project management to select clear objectives and guide the entire team to creating your product this method ensures that everybody in your team is on the same page and is working towards the same goal, the same vision and the same deadlines. Now that we understand what the smart project beef means, let's dive into the world of fashion and if you would like to create your own fashion collection, make sure that you keep these essential things in mind. One is market research. Now I've spoke about market research before as well in my other videos which I'm going to link up here. It's very important to do your market research because you do not want to create things that people will not buy or create things that people find interesting. So it's always important to do your market research before you delve into creating anything for that matter. Number two is brand identity. Now the reason we have to keep brand identity in mind when creating a product is because your brand identity speaks volume to the consumer. No matter what product you're creating, the consumer relates to your brand more than product. A lot of shops out there sell shoes for instance, right? A lot of the same design of shoes out there because of a certain brand, maybe the logo, maybe the story behind the, the brand, maybe the colors behind the brand, uniqueness of the brand that is what people relate to and that's why people go for that brand. Number three, target audience. Remember how I said you're creating a brand for a target audience. Always keep your target audience in mind or when you create apps for your line and your clothing line you're waiting for this one person that you have in mind number four seasonal theme so deciding on a concept of your collection a lot of brands out there do this thing called globalization globalization is basically it's a global brand like uniqlo but it's also localized like for instance in hot climate countries they would not sell a lot of outerwear whereas in countries that are actually cooler and have cold climates they would sell outerwear more than the other countries so Keeping your seasonal theme in mind is also important with this because you do not want to create outerwear in a hot climate country. Number five, color palette and fabrics. I've mentioned before that I do not, because I, can't, I cannot grasp colors. I know what looks good, but I don't know what to choose to put together. So the look for sources, WTSN, go online, see what colors work. There are lots of apps out there and online spaces where you can just go and go like okay i like these colors can you help me put a color palette together and they'll help you put a color palette together and then think about the color palette and go look for fabrics or so in creating a collection you can actually get the fabric first and colors and decide later what colors are you going to put together for your entire seasonal collection number six your range of projects so you need to determine the type of clothing that your range would have what would you have like a out of a t-shirt, shirt, pants, a short, skirts, belts, shoes. Are you going to come up with the entire like head to toe collection rain or are you just going to have every season update them with the t-shirts and shirts and shorts and then everything else edits and stuff is going to be consistent throughout your brand so you need to decide on what goes out every season and basically how many seasons you are actually going to have a year and number seven which is budget and resources now this is very, very important i know this is something that we should think of first and foremost but i put it because after deciding everything else only then you kind of have an idea of your entire budget and your resources so try your best to get resources what's already available to you you have a friend who's a photographer you have a friend who's good in using illustrator to make patterns and things like that so try and be resourceful as much as you can and then with a budget you a lot of designers do start with their savings first but it's a good idea to use that savings and then 
have a plan ready go to the banks and try and get a loan to match up your savings so that you've got like double of that amount to start with that way you can create like a better cash flow for your business okay that was a lot now let's look at the role of a design brief in creating any fashion collection a design brief in any collection and it's usually use this as like a mind map or a road map so to speak so it ensures that every your final collection that you've actually created aligns with the brand's vision mission and satisfy market demands or market targets demands a design brief would include the details about the target audience the mood board which you'll put together the color palette your fabric choices what you've chosen and any specific design elements like pleats or buttons and the kind of buttons kind of closures zips and things like that and by referencing this one particular design brief throughout the creative process all the designers in your team you can stay focused and produce a cohesive and marketable collection so if you have two or three people designing together and you've got one person designing shoes for instance one person designing pants or shorts is mood board ready and up there like it's called a design brief then everyone will follow it and they won't go out of tension too far you know so it's always good to create like a starting point and then let everybody kind of create based around that design brief that you've created so now that we've covered the preliminary steps let's explore the complete production process of creating your own fashion collection number one easy to speak is pattern making basically once you've created your design let's say you've already created your design you've got your basic drawing or sketch the first thing you need to do is make a pattern out of it so how do you make a pattern you can hire a pattern maker or you could create templates using like clothe 3d as an online platform you they've got like the basic templates for a lot of the garments and then you can modify them a little bit that's more user friendly for someone who's beginner and doesn't know how to use the other programs like uh, the cat program maybe or maybe even like adobe illustrator so that is more user friendly in that sense and then number two is creating a sample so creating a sample this is why i like clothes 3d so much i haven't used it subscribed to it because i haven't reached that point of creating my fashion collection but i would so subscribe to clothes 3d because once you created your pattern right and you you know like this is what i want to share and stuff they clothes 3d will create the pattern for you and clothes 3d would also kind of create like an ai animated 3d sort of sample for whatever you've created and then you can put that creation on like a and person and the animated person would walk like as if it's doing a fashion show kind of thing and then you can see how the fabric moves how it feels and how it actually looks on a person i really like clothes 3d for this because it sort of save money in terms of sample creation until you're like really happy with what you have at the end of it but then it before going into manufacturing you still need like the i would say you would still need like the hard copy <laughs> or like the actual textile sample as opposed to just something online so after you've you like realized what you really like on clothes 3d or even like just making samples on Adobe Illustrator, you need to get someone who can make a sample for you. Number three, sourcing materials. So now once you've, uh, ideally sourcing materials is something that should be done before you even make a sample. But say for in your process is a bit different and you want to do the whole pattern making first to see if that dress with the pleats or the shirt with the many pleats and you're not making a basic t-shirt or a shirt you're making something really significant something with a lot of pleats a lot of work and stuff like that so then of course you need a you make a sample out of a 12 fabric just 12 in fabric normal and you ask the sample machines to do it and then once you're happy with how the fabric falls and everything then you go like okay i'll source my fabric now but then again i would suggest making the final sample in the actual fabric because then you would know actually how it falls and stuff so i would actually put sourcing materials before but it depends on you do this is something that's important to sourcing materials you did a plethora number of ways in how you can source your fabrics and a lot of them is just joining textile expos search for textile expos online and a lot of different countries have them there's a lot of people and a lot of demand so maybe like hong kong italy france these kind of places have 
and even the US have got really big textile expos. So basically everyone, every fabric manufacturer would come to this place to kind of try and sell their fabric and that's like the best place to go. Uh, number four, we move on to manufacturing. Now this is large scale manufacturing. You could also do it in-house if you have the resources, if you have people working for you that you can do it in-house, but otherwise manufacturing means now this is the time where you go and hopefully at this time you've already found a manufacturer that you're happy to work with and then they've made a sample for you. You're really happy with the sample they've made you know to kind of replicate what you've actually made the sample and you you then check their sample as opposed to your sample and then kind of differentiate them and see how good their quality their workmanship is their timeline is you know you need to factor in all this and the price as well because a lot of different factories would offer you a lot of different price in terms of how much what's your minimum order quantity or moq and then when you're happy with the manufacturing say you found someone who you can relate to very well the manufacturer is so great they talk to you really well and they understand what you want they're really happy to help you a startup grow then you can you know put your orders in and then usually you only pay them the full amount after you've collected the items or like once they've finished and done the quality control check which comes to my next one which is number five we need to do quality control so quality control can be done in many different levels you can do it while they are doing the sewing to check that they haven't missed anything because sometimes that can happen and then number two you can also have someone to check the boxes once they've packed everything just open like 10 percent of the boxes to see like what's the quality like like do a random check in the front the back things like that you know like out of the like let's say you've made a hundred garments right out of the hundred garments just check just check 10 percent randomly to see if the quality is good and then after that you'll do another quality control check once the fabric or the garments have reached you in your place of country and where you're doing business and then you open them up and do a final quality check on all your garments because you need to put a price tag on them and then put it on the shelf so you need to do quality control checks quite a number of times but it's worth it and then it comes to distributing in retail so i'm talking about the steps here but by now you should have already known that because these are the steps these are the things that you need to have figured out so then once you get the the you know all your garments and whatever your your inventory so to speak now it's time to for you to figure out how you're going to sell them so are you going to go uh, b2c which is business to consumer which is direct like going online having your shop and you're selling straight from you to consumer or you can also do b2b at the same time which is business to business which means you sell your stuff to other stores that store different different brands in their store and then you sell your garments to them on wholesale so they buy a chunk of your stuff on wholesale and yeah um, if if the stuff that they stock for you sells well then usually you do like you know they would place more orders with you and that's how you kind of build your business and then there are a lot of online stores that sell different brands too so that's another way how to do business to business and selling wholesale or another one is consignment by consignment i mean some stores some department stores would say okay so you leave your stuff here with us and what we don't sell we'll give back to you but out of what we sell then we'll give you a percentage of that you know profit so that's good and bad in a way good in a way that you get that exposure from that department store the foot traffic and everything but bad in the sense that the stuff that they don't sell or that's damaged comes back to you and then you're left with like this inventory that you now have to get rid of yourself and um lastly number seven is marketing and sales so this is something that you have to think about throughout having your business like how you're going to market your stuff how you're going to get people to keep buying sales really basically promotions running competitions and things like that it's all always good to check there are lots of books out there on marketing and sales and you can learn heaps and heaps the one that i really like is by Subri. he's so good i'm going to put a link to oh picture of his book right here so you can have a look it's so easy to understand it's so incredibly good and if you still don't understand i would suggest this is not a sponsored video but i would suggest you just get in him on board get a call from him and getting some advice directly from him and actually paying him for that advice because it will be brilliant in getting your brand out there because he does understand that different brands have different needs in terms of how they market and sales every brand cannot be marketed and sold or have sales the same way that was a lot of information and i hope that you found this video helpful if you did please i would so appreciate it if you would just hit the subscribe button and hit the 
bell notification button so you don't miss another video or any videos and remember proper planning and execution are keys to success in any venture so go ahead put your ideas into action and watch your creative dreams come into reality thank you all for watching if you have any questions be sure to pop them down below and i will answer them as soon as i can feel free to leave a comment down below it's completely free and i'll see you in my next video until next time stay inspired keep innovating and goodbye